video because of the size of the uh, or the video itself to be um, uploaded it should be limited I think um, so we were talking about the sphenopalatine fossa and uh, the PPF we are going to discuss it in more detail but I want you just to familiarize yourself with the region between the posterior maxilla or within the palatine bone as well as uh, the sphenoid so PPF the pterygopalatine fossa is a very important landmark within the head and neck whenever we talk about the head and neck I will tell you that the PPF is a roundabout of the head and neck it has seven connections with different parts of the head and neck it connects to the infratemporal fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure it connects through the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum and this is what we are going to localize now we it's 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 also important to remember that it goes through the pterygoid plate with the pterygoid canal, uh, pharyngeal canal with the nasopharynx, inferior orbital fissure, greater palatine canal with the oral cavity, sphenopalatine foramen with the nose. So the, the sphenopalatine, the PPF of the pterygopalatine fossa is of extreme importance in the head and neck. And I just want to uh, want you to spend more time in looking at it and 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 know where or how can you localize it. The idea behind it is also it will guide you through the different foramina in at least seven foramina in the skull base you just can uh, familiarize yourself just by knowing the pterygopalatine fossa so our concern today is the pterygopalatine fossa connecting the pterygopalatine fossa with the middle cranial fossa so whenever you look at this the, the PPF and then you go up so just try to go up toward the brain and, and so I'm sorry I'm going down so let's go up so whenever it go, you go up and you see a connection between the pterygopalatine fossa the PPF and the middle cranial fossa this is where the the foramen rotundum will be and also this will be the area where the um, so you can see here it's actually the the foramen rotundum is nothing but uh, like a canal so some look at it as as a canal so it's a connecting the pterygo the PPF or the pterygopalatine fissure or pterygopalatine fossa with the middle cranial fossa if you are not sure about it so if you are not you start to familiarize yourself with this and you go up then you see the middle cranial, but you're not, you're not very very sure is it really true this is the foramen rotundum or not what I would recommend is you go to the cranial the, the 3d view and then just put within the coronal view the area where you think it is it, is, it will be the foramen rotundum and it has a very interesting or very classic uh, uh, shape in the um, in the coronal section you'll see it as if it's an opening on either side of the ismoid air cell so this will be the foramen rotundum and you can familiarize yourself with it in the, within the coronal view it's very interesting to see so you still can also localize it just by looking at the sphenoid air sinus in the coronal view and look at the area where the cella will be so the area of the cella tersica and then you will see opening on either side of the sphenoid air sinus and this is nothing but uh, the foramen rotundum and here you can localize it easily as well and so this is another method of localizing the foramen ro rotundum foramen rotundum with with the air um, will be um, the location of the maxillary nerve which is the second division of the uh, cranial nerve number five which is the fifth cranial nerve so now we just to remind you not to, to miss anything we were talking about cranial nerve number one and we localize it for the cribriform plate optic nerve optic canal third fourth and sixth through the superior orbital fissure ophthalmic division of the fifth will go with the superior orbital fissure and soft and now the foramen rotundum and we localize the foramen rotundum together now back to again number five the third branch which is the mandibular with the l the mandibular will go to the famous foramina which is the foramen oval i feel like the easiest way for me to localize the foramen oval is to go through the carotid canal and look at it you know the carotid artery is very easy to track so when you go down to the neck 
you see that the carotid artery has something to do with the internal jugular yes we all know that usually the internal jugular will move with the carotid artery and then the carotid artery the common carotid artery will divide into internal and external carotid and the internal carotid artery will go to the skull base through the carotid canal foramen lacerum and he has also a course inside the cavernous sinus if you remember so if you just track the carotid artery it will guide you through a very nice um, you can never mistake it the carotid canal and the foramen lacerum here this, this is a clivus yeah there is an opening inside no, just beside the clivus and you can see it a very big foramen this is a foramen lacerum and this is also very important for patients or for those who are working with the nasopharyngeal cancer tumor we know that the nasopharynx the nasopharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma can have what we are calling it intracranial extension and the intracranial extension through the nasopharynx can come through this foramen which is the foramen lacerum we will talk about it with the nasopharynx and we will familiarize ourselves again and again with this because this is of extreme importance in target volume delineation when we are talking about the target volume delineation of the nasopharynx so here is the carotid canal yeah this is uh, you can never you can never mistake or you can never miss it because it's very a uh, large canal it's very uh, famous and also we are we can track the carotid so there is no way you can you can miss it so first localize the carotid canal and then what you can do is just to uh, sorry it's just it's very slow it's very slow the computer uh, so just look uh, anterior and lateral or antro lateral to the carotid canal and then you can localize easily the our hero today is the foramen oval so if this is the carotid canal here and this look at anterolateral this will be the foramen oval and it's very important to know the foramen oval which is the uh, fifth cranial nerve will go through the foramen uh, oval I'm not sure about it I want to make sure so what you can do is you just go to the coronal view again and just put your cursor to the foramen oval and it will never never be mistaken mistaken in the coronal view it's a large opening inside or within the skull base it's different from the foramen retendum yes the foramen retendum was adherent to the sphenoid and it was like really rounded it's because the foramen retendum actually we can consider it or we can look at it as a canal rather than a real foramen but the foramen valley is a real foramen it's a quite a big one inside the the skull base you can see it yeah and it also has a relationship with the pterygoids because when we talk about the, the this with the patient for like an oral cavity tumor um, with perineural infiltration i'll tell you that you may track your volume from down here from the mandible along the pterygoid and you go to the foramen oval and this will help you or serve you to put an extra uh, ctv to track the nerve and up to the foramen oval and this is of extreme importance in radiation oncology don't mix things together v1 fifth cranial nerve ophthalmic division go to soft the foramen for the second division will be the foramen rotundum and the third division will be foramen oval and we all know now how to localize the foramen oval we talked about the abducent which is the sixth cranial nerve just put it in soft and we talked about it before now the seventh and the eighth so the facial cranial nerve and the eighth cranial nerve the facial cranial nerve has an intracranial part and has an extracranial part we all know that yeah so the facial nerve will follow the vestibulocochlear nerve going inside the internal auditory canal how can we localize the internal auditory canal this is very easy to do you just go up in the brain and the first bone to appear in the brain will be nothing but your petrous bone we all know the petrous bone i don't imagine that someone will not be aware of the petrous bone so whenever you see the petrous bone you can just look from inside of the petrous bone and the opening from inside the petrous bone will be nothing but the internal auditory canal so you can see the petrous bone started to appear now and we are looking for an opening from inside internal auditory meatus or within the petrous bone you can see it very 
simple and very easy to localize so inside the internal auditory canal the seventh and the eighth cranial nerve and they have a very nice mri we'll try to put it in a, another uh, video um, so that we can also like imagine how the vestibular cochlear nerve will jo be joined by the seventh the seventh will then have an in uh, like a, a, a course inside the uh, the the ear and will come out through the the uh, stylomastoid foramen so how can you localize the stylomastoid foramen very very easy i think to localize the styloid process so all what you have to do is to look at the styloid process which it will be like a, a bone density point uh, has nothing to do with the vessels away from the vessels this can never be anything except the styloid process just follow the styloid process where it goes upwards toward the skull base and then you see that it's getting closer to the mastoid and whenever they join each other then this is the stylomastoid foramen sorry for the jump so this this is a mastoid air cell we all know that and this is the uh the um uh, the the mastoid uh, sorry the uh, styloid process and styloid process will just go to uh, reach the mastoid air cells and this will be nothing will be the the stylomastoid foramen and we all know that the stylomastoid foramen the facial nerve will go out and will move to the uh, parotid gland where it split the parotid into superficial and deep ro uh, lobe and then it will supply its branches in the face so the seventh is very easy and can never be mistaken the eighth is also very easy because it's both will go through the internal auditory canal then the ninth tenth eleventh so the glossopharyngeal and the spinal accessory and the uh, sorry the vagus and the spinal accessory just remember with me the carotid artery with the jugular vein are two large tubes yeah so if you put your finger two large tubes together will give you the figure 11 yeah it's as if you are writing 11 just remember that the jugular jugular uh, with the carotid 11 so if you remember 11 remember uh, cranial nerve 11 as well and the, all together will go through what we are calling it the jugular foramen and this is very easy and very easy to localize you have to do it, you can do it in two two ways one is inside the brain with the posterior fossa you can see here what we are calling it the sigmoid sinus you can see the sigmoid sinus sigmoid sinus will go inside the jugular foramen to go to be the jugular vein yeah so we all know they can see it very easy yeah very nice and then the jugular vein will appear or you can go down in the neck sorry you can go down in the neck and follow your jugular vein and then um whenever you see your jugular vein i'm sorry for that it's a technical error this is related to the uh, internet net connection because i'm doing it remotely um so you can see the jugular vein and if you follow the jugular vein in the direction of the skull base you can easily <coughs> sorry you can easily see the jugular vein going through the jugular full ramina and here you have to delineate cranial nerve number um, 10 or this is the opening for cranial nerve number 9 uh, 10 and and 11 yeah so the jugular foramen uh, jugular foramen has two openings and uh, I, I don't think it's really important because you have to to delineate the whole area so if you follow the jugular vein from below from below in the neck i'm sorry so this is the jugular vein here and then you you try to go toward the skull base you will see that it's going inside the brain to be the sigmoid or it actually the opposite the sigmoid will be the internal jugular and this will be the jugular foramina so it's very easy to localize the jugular foramina and then the last cranial nerve which is the hypoglossal canal the hypoglossal canal is the largest sorry it's the last nerve to the cranial nerve number 12 12 should be respected it is the largest it will have or 
the, the nerve will have a canal by under its own name. So how can we localize the hypoglossal canal for the hypoglossal nerve? It's very, very easy, I have to say. All what you have to do is to go to the skull base and localize what we are calling it the condyles of the skull. Yeah, we all know that this is a foramen foramen and we know that these are the condyles. So what you can do is go through the condyle and just move uh, uh, upwards and you will see that there is two opening on either side will start to appear so this is the condyles here and then we are moving uh, upwards toward the the brain and then you will see two openings will start to appear we'll show it to you now so we are now going upwards upwards um, it's a bit slow upwards upwards and then you can see start an opening here started to appear so this is the hypoglossal canal in a very simple way so i think this is the easiest way to remember cranial nerves and i hope that this is useful for you um, the next time we will go through the nasal pharynx and we will work hard on target volume delineations and anatomy of the skull base because i think it's really it seems to be very very important to as a radiation oncologist to familiarize yourself with this from the radiation oncology point of view and i hope that this is useful for you okay thank you very much bye